Well, hello, everyone out there. Once again, you know this is your boy, Apostle, Prophet, Success Coach, Mentor, whatever you want to call me, Eddie Tate. And I just want to thank God tonight for coming on. Uh, we just really just thank God for another day. And I just want each one of y'all to be encouraged to ever tune in, be watching this by the way of YouTube, Facebook Live, TikTok, whatever format you see it on, inserts of it. I just want to thank God for you. And I just want to thank God for each one of you tonight that will tune in and catch uh, this broadcast. Because I believe that this this we're going to finish really strong. We're going to finish really strong. I believe that there's a breakthrough anointing. And I believe that nothing is impossible with God. See, when you understand how the kingdom works, how that powerful system living inside of you works, you can basically do anything through the power of God. Amen. Scripture said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. I feel the anointing even right now. I feel that God is putting a special anointing on me that for the rest of this year. And I just believe that there are going to be so many breakthroughs. I'm going to be appearing and coming forth to many of your areas. I'm getting on the move now. And we'll still be teaching here on Facebook Live. Amen. And you too. I want you to be encouraged and understand that the greater one lives inside of you. I said the greater one lives inside of you. And without a shadow of a doubt, everything that looks impossible in the kingdom, it is possible. The supernatural is natural in the kingdom. I know we talk about miracles, but when we really understand the system that we are a part of, the kingdom of God system, you'll begin to understand that you are in a day and time now to where that, that the power of God is moving and is working on your behalf like never before. Amen. I believe that now, it's a day now, that we must start to take new territories. We must start to possess the land. Do y'all hear me right now? I said we must <coughs> possess the land. We must possess the land. Amen. So now, tonight, I've been talking about uh, possessing the land and um, We've been talking about birth, bringing forth in this uh, season and time. I believe with all my heart, soul, and mind that it is a time of bringing forth. This is a time of coming forth. Now, one of the things that we will begin to understand that the scripture says this is the day that the Lord has made. And we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Now, let's understand the day that we're in. Now, I don't care how it been looking or how it looked. Uh, I don't care what what things you went through, uh, even on this year thus far. Yes, there was trials. Every year brings trials. Every year brings trials. Every year. Every year. So... I, I know 2023 is going to be a year, uh, uh, you know, a great increase. But I mean, let's face it. As long as there's a devil, you're going to have some trials around. Am I right? There are going to be some things going to be held up. There are going to be some things that's going to uh, uh, strange. <laughs> things going to be strange. But hey, the Bible said we got what? Victory. Amen. And can I, can I say something to tonight? You know, God wants to show you how to. Uh, live so victorious where you get sweatless victories. Amen. Sweatless victories. I, I, I believe that sweatless victories mm, 
is in the forecast. Amen. So now, the scripture says that even if we seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things shall be added. I've been talking to you about possessing the land, possessing your possessions. There, there are things that God wants you to take possession of. The word possess means ownership. Now, by you being the authority in the earth realm, I know a lot of people complain about the devil and, 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 and ask God to do something about him. But can I share something with you? You're the one that's going to have to do something about the devil because Jesus has already done whatever he's going to do with him and about him. Stripped him of all power and everything. The authority he took from Adam, he stripped it and gave it to the church. Now, if the church is not using it, it's on them. See, I know, I know a lot of things, you know, in religion, they taught you to pray and ask God to come out the sky and beg God and plead with God. But that ain't, but that ain't the case. You know, it entails a lot about the responsibility, you know, that God has put upon us. The, 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 the scripture says, whatever you bind on earth, will be bound in heaven. And I try to get so many people to realize one thing, that if whatever's going to happen, it's going to have to happen because, um, you know, it's going to have to happen because you use the word of God and you use the principles of the word. Amen. You use the principles of the word. Now, and... The Bible says, what did Jesus tell, tell uh, Peter? He said, I've given you the keys of the kingdom. Keys open things up. They open things up. It gives you access. Now, you don't understand. You have access. You got the kingdom inside of you. Do y'all hear me? I said, you have the kingdom in you. The kingdom is in you. It's, it's not up in the sky. It's in you. Now, you are part of another country. One of my um, assignments is to teach the kingdom and the way it operates. You, you're not part of a religious system. You're part of another country that operates by another government, operates by a different government. You know, every country is regulated by rules and laws. Now, one of the problems with the church is that they don't understand the laws of the kingdom. They don't understand the law, different laws. And I, can, I can't teach all of them tonight, but I'm going to tell you something. You are part of a system and you come from and you are from another country. Yeah, you're from another country. I understand this about the kingdom. Kingdom of God is a system. It is another country. Yes. That, that's really what it means. You're part, you have dual citizenship. You have citizenship with America, Bahamas, wherever you live. And then you have citizenship with the kingdom of God. You, the kingdom of God carries a culture. One of the hardest things is to teach people in this era and this democracy that we live in. Everybody wants to make their own decision choices. To get them to understand that the kingdom has within it benefits. And because you are a part of that system, you are part, you are what you call a citizen. You are not a subject. A subject is somebody that's been dominated. God never come to dominate you. See that? You have a king named Jesus. That is over the system. That's why in this earth, you are a king. Now, I'm talking tonight about, you know, about this, the, the taking territory and this authority. Now, we've been talking about possessing the land. Now, we're going to understand about taking territory. We're going to have to understand tonight 
that if I'm going to take territory, I got to understand how a king operates. The Bible said that you are kings and priests in the earth, didn't it? So I have to learn how a king operates. Amen. How do a king, how does a system that's ran by a king operate? Different from your democracy. You know, democracy, you know, democratic. You know, where everybody got choices and votes. Well, in the kingdom of God's system, there is no, no voting. There's, there's no voting. Now, I'm going to say it's totally ran by dictatorship. And when I say dictatorship, I'm not talking about the evil dictators of the past like Hitler, Saddam Hussein. And I'm not talking about that. Uh, that, that that's called uh, uh, abuse of authority, oppression. But a dictatorship, I mean, when something is ran by dictation, that means a law is set by the king or by the ruler of that country. And it's a decree. And you know what? I mean, you can't, they, they don't give you voting rights like you got in America. No, they don't give you voting rights. In a kingdom, there's no voting rights. It is whatever the king says. In our system, Awesome thing about our king, Jesus, and his laws. He said that the laws are spiritual. So that's the law of faith. He said, without faith, it's impossible to please him. Y'all see that? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. You cannot please him without faith. Now, you, you have to have faith to please him. You know, now, you have to believe. He wants you to believe. He wants you to believe. Y'all see that? Yeah, he wants you to believe. He wants to be believed more than what you would ever even imagine. So, that is the law of faith. The law of faith is the foundation law of the kingdom. And, the, and, and let me say this here. Laws work for anybody that worked them. Your country, America, Bahamas, England, wherever you listen to me from, your country worked by laws. And when you obey them laws, you become a good standing citizen. Well, the kingdom of God worked by laws. The law of faith is one. See, the law of faith. What is faith? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. It is proof of things that you expecting. Expecting means desiring, like a woman desiring to see a baby in nine months. The baby's already been done, but guess what's happening? She has to hope to see the baby in nine months. See? And it's evidence or proof of things that's not seen. It's evidence and proof of things not seen. So now, you have within you a spiritual kingdom. Now, the thing about the supernatural, you, it has to be believed. You got to believe in this system that's inside of you. You got to believe that that system is more powerful than anything the devil could bring your way. Than any financial struggle, any sickness, any disease, any uh family problem, that, that system inside of you is stronger than anything. That's why Paul said, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. But he strengthened me with might. What is might? Might is supernatural power. Highest level of the anointing. That means with the spirit of might, you can do anything. Amen. Now I want you, I want you to understand something that where God is, is taking us too in this in this season and time here. You know, when you stand up, up up against opposition, you're not standing by yourself. Do y'all hear me? I say you're not standing by yourself. When you stand up in opposition, you're not standing by yourself. Now greatest he is in me. 
Now here's the thing. I don't have to pray and ask God to come out the sky because God is already inside of me. I know you hear all the songs and all that. Lord, come by here. Come down. Fall on me and all that. that, that, that I know. They sound good and we, you know, roll them and, you know. Yes, my thing is, you know, we just need to pray that God will stir up the power in us. And then all of us can get a fresh anointing to fall on us. Ain't nothing wrong with the song. We, we all, we, you can get a fresh anointing every day. If enough believers get together and bring all their anointings together, well, guess what happens? A fresh anointing falls on everybody. Amen. Now, I want you to understand something tonight that when we understand this system called the kingdom that we live in, it is, it is more dominant than anything in the earth realm. It, it is this earth has a curse on it. It's a, it's a system that's ran by a curse. The Bible said all that's in the world is the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. That's what the word of God said. Be not conformed to this world, but be renewed. Y'all see that? To be renewed. Amen. By, you know, transformed by the renewing of your mind. The word renew there means chrono in Greek, which means um, which which means to renovate. When you renovate an old house, you tear off all old boards. You tear all old boards off, put new ones on. That's the way your mind's got to get. It's got to get. We've got to tear all that old thinking, that worldly thinking, out of it. The way the world think. People in the world think they have to have debt for everything. Am I right? It, it's just a whole different system the way people think. They, they think fearful. Then the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear but a power and a beloved son. See, see, the sober world thinks fearful and they, you know, they, 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 they think in competition. I mean, it, it's a whole lot to go along with worldly thinking. That's what the Bible says renew your mind so you don't think like you're part of that system. You once was a part of that worldly system, but now you have came out of that system. Y'all see that? You came out of that system. And now, because you are out of that system, you, you're taking on a new system called the kingdom of God. Now we've got to learn how this kingdom functions. Because if, if, we, don't, if we don't know how to function, we can't really renew our mind to it. The Bible said that you may prove what is that good and acceptable will of God. Now, in that same scripture where it says you need you got to prove. The word prove may be able to do. You will not be able to do what that kingdom of God that lives inside you require if your mind is not renewed. See, you think you can just try to work it out and do all good works and everything. But that kingdom requires, number one, to believe. You got to believe. You got to believe in God. The Bible, see, mm, have faith in God. See, or have the God kind of faith. Then you can say to a mountain, move henceforth. Your words have got to get so strong in this system until that when you say something, you got to believe what you say. And when it get that strong in this system, my God, in the, in the, in, in the kingdom of God, get that strong in you. When you release words, you're releasing faith-filled words. Now, somebody said, well, Apostle, how do I get that? Well, I'm glad you asked. The word of God says faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Y'all see that? So, when I release my words, I've got to be able to release faith along with it. Amen. I have to be able to release faith. My words have to be filled with faith. Mark eleven twenty three says. It said that when you stand praying, believe that you'll have those things that you say. And doubt not in your heart. See, and doubt not in your heart, and you will have what you say. Words give substance to my faith. See, you gotta understand something. You made the Bible said, let us make man. God said, make man our own image and likeness. God operates by words. He operates by words. 
Just like God operate by words, you have to operate by words. Does this make any sense? You have to operate by words. Words. You know, words. Now, but the part, the thing is with the words, you got to believe what you say. Then in Mark 11, 23, I'm in the Bible. It said that when you stand praying, and believe you'll have those things that you say. And doubt not where it in the heart. Real faith is of the heart. See, real faith is of the heart. It's of the heart. Real faith is of the heart. See, see, you can have doubt in your head, but as long as you get faith in your heart, the doubts can be doubt can be thoughts. And the word of God says, see, you can battle thoughts with words. See. So now, the word of God tells us in, in, in 2 Corinthians 10. It says, bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. What do you mean the uh, to obedience of the word? You battle bad thoughts with the word of God. Because thoughts are going to come. The devil is going to be the devil and he's going to send them. So, but one thing about it, just don't process them. Tell the devil that it's not none of mine. And um, we, we're not going to deal with this here. So, I, I bring it into captivity with the word of God. Find an area of the word that, that combats that thought. And put it in captivity. And don't let it process through your imagination and through your words. Are y'all listening to me? See that? So now what you have to do is, is your responsibility, not God. So don't be praying and asking God to do it. Because he said, I've given you power over all the powers of the enemy. So now you 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 still operate by choice and you don't you could choose not to process bad thoughts and bad words and bad imagination. Because that's what bring you in bondage. Are y'all listening to me? Amen. So, you can still choose to, to, to uh, you know, process bad thoughts and words and bad thinking. That's why you got to be careful what's going into your mind. That's why you got to be careful what's going into your thought life. The word of God said, as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. When you start to process thoughts and you turn them into words and imagination, you get in trouble. Now, now here's the now here's the on the flip side. That's why we need the words constantly going into our mind. I keep the word going into my mind. I keep good messages. I keep good material, lectures, motivational stuff. I keep it going into my mind. You know why? Because I realize I have to constantly stay on guard with my mind. I have to constantly guard my mind. The Bible said, guard your heart. For out of it flows the issues of life. Y'all yeah, hear me? Now, I'm telling you tonight to get you in a place. Because sometimes we sit and say, well, yeah, God going to do this. God going to do that. When God has already done a lot of things, it's just that we don't have the faith to react to it. Do y'all hear me? See, God loves, uh, God don't love Ken of Copeland more than he loved you. Y'all hear me? He don't love Jerry Seville no more than he loved you. It's just that some people, they understand the word of God and they get a good understanding and they learn how to use it. They don't just set, let it entertain them. So you got to be careful too. So you can watch a lot of preaching and teaching and listen to it, but it become entertainment. It, 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 you got to process what you hear. So how do I process it, Apostle? In other words, I got to get to thinking like that. I got to talking like that. Then I got to move in action. I got to take some action. If God says he's giving me a company, I can't just, just sit around saying he's going to do it. If he said he's already done it, I mean, I got to get on the internet, start doing the research. I got to find out what I need. I got to find out what it's going to cost me. Is, is that going to cost you anything? So people say, well, Apostle, I'll just wait till God give me the money. Is finding out what it's going to cost you is... That costing you anything? No. The Bible says what? Count up the cost. That, that, that ain't costing you anything. To, to, to see, 
I tell people, people I'm, I'm, I'm believing God for my business. I say, well, um, have you got a name? Do you have do you have a vision? You got a name? You got a plan? Do you have a business plan you're putting together? I'm just waiting on God. But number one, you think about it. The Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. Vision attracts money. See, you, you, you have to start seeing something. Because money is attracted to vision. <clears throat> where there's no vision. Or nothing revealed or revelation. The people perish. See that? So money is attracted to vision. You, you want to get money attracted to you? You, you, you got to come up. You got to have some vision. Vision. Come on, somebody. You got to see some vision. Mm -hmm. Vision. Yes. Now, what happens here tonight is what we are talking about. You got to learn how to take territory. Take. And I'm not talking about sitting up pleading with God for hours, for pray till you fall, ask him to do stuff. You got to learn, number one, I have this powerful system inside of me called the kingdom of God. It's power. It's righteousness. It's joy. It's peace in the Holy Ghost. It is so powerful till the devil can't do anything with it. He'll just try to convince you that he can. Does this make any sense? Yeah, he was trying to convince you that he can do something with it. But he can't. <clears throat> In reality. I want you to understand something. You, you, you got to live by a concept. And you got to live in a place where you believe everything is already done. But just because you believe it's already done, you need to be seeking the Holy Spirit, which is inside of you, this kingdom, and asking him to show you what to do now. That's all. See, most people don't do that. You know, I'm just waiting on the Lord. Most people don't do that. Most people do not seek God for what, for number one, um, what season they're in, instructions, and things that they have to do, steps. The Bible said the what? The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So now, in all my years, with the, in, in, you know, understanding the kingdom, there's many things I had to just um, rise up. I'm not, when I found out that that's what it was that God wanted me to do, I had to rise up and do it. I said I had to rise up and do it. Did y'all see that? So now, where we... When I say rise up and do it, when I found the instruction that God and the Holy Spirit revealed to me, I just I just started doing what he said. If he told me I had to sow a certain amount of money uh, on a consistent basis to a ministry to help another ministry, I, I did it. You know, if he told me I need to do uh, a certain amount of fasting and then praying a certain amount of time, I did it. And then if he told me I had to go somewhere, I went. Now sometimes we don't want to understand what God has told us to do. No, we don't always understand it. But I'm going to tell you something. You know, it's not about you um, clearly understanding everything that God said. Because when God speaks, a lot of times you're not going to really clearly understand everything because God don't give you give it to you he just wants you to start moving now we talking about taking some territory here tonight I believe that God wants us to take new territories or new frontiers he wants to expand our borders do this make any sense he wants to expand our borders now, number one, you'll never expand a border and you understand the concept of a king. A king, number one, can't have fear to attack another king 
if he's trying to expand his domain. Now, this is how it worked in the Bible days. There was kings. Kings ran the lands. Now, the thing with the king is the king owned the land. He owned the people. He owned the house. He owned everything. The people owned nothing. But the king took good care of them, but they had access to everything. I know that's different in your culture or in this Western world in America. You own all your stuff. But they owned nothing. Can I say something to you about your, your system, your kingdom? You don't own nothing. Now, I know you say, well, if I work for that car, I, my hard own money bought that house. You don't own nothing. Jesus owns it. The king owns it. You just have access to it. But the good thing about it, you got access to everything you need. We're stewards, right? So that means we have access to everything that we need. This is how kingdoms said the people had access to the land. They could farm the land. They had houses. And the king, whenever the king saw his domain or his territory needed to be expanded, and there would be another king on the other border, he would take a chance. And what he would do is he'd count up the cost, see if his military was big enough, army big enough. And what he would do is he'd raise war. Here's the thing, when he, when it, it, if he raised war and he defeated that king, well, now what happened is the people become his people, that land become his land, hit, and guess what, then his territories expanded. I know in America, we, 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 don't, we don't live like that, you know, because uh, we live by a uh, democratic system where we vote everything. But see, in a kingdom, a king makes a decree. A decree is a law. Remember in the book of Job said, you should decree a thing and it shall be established. A decree is a law from a king. That's why you got to learn how to open up your mouth. Do you hear me? A decree is a law from a king. So the reason why you have so much trouble with your finance because it's your money. You consider this yours. So when you consider something is yours, that means that you do what you want with it. You give it when you want to give it. You do what you want with it. But the problem is it's not yours. See, if we really understand stewardship, we just a steward over it. That's why a lot of times it's good when many of you, I, I, I applaud many of y'all that come on here because you allow God to tell you what to do with your finances. And I really like that. Do with, you know, the finances that he puts you over. And I, I really like that. And I know God likes that. There are some people, though, when something is theirs, you know, they give it if they want or if they, or if they don't, they don't won't give it. But see, when it's easy to give something that belongs to somebody else away. So if you consider your the money you say is yours, if you consider that as being Jesus the king, when he tells you to give it, you don't have no problem. It should be easy to give some somebody else's away. Mm -hmm. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Yeah, I know. As long as it's yours, though, though then we have a problem. Because when it's yours, you become attached to it. In your time, your emotions become attached to something. To get rid of it, it's going to cause you grief. Just like if you're married to somebody and go through a divorce, it's going to cause you grief because your emotions are attached to the person. That's what the Bible said. Uh, for the love of money. It's the relationship that you have with money. Determines what you do with it and your attitude toward it. For the love of money is the root of all you. The love of, not money. See, I know in church you heard, especially in some of these, these, these churches, oh yeah, money is the root of all evil. The Bible never said money was the root <coughs> of all evil. It is the love of money. It's the love of money. That's the root of all evil, the love of it. See, that now, Timothy had rich people in his congregation. I know, I know you people don't think, well, nobody rich in the New Testament. Just you need to read. Timothy had rich people in his congregation. Know how I know? If you read 2 Timothy, I think the sixth chapter, it, it, it says, warn them that be rich in this world. 
Now, Paul is dressing a young pastor that he's put over this church. He makes him a bishop or a ruling elder. That's all a bishop is. There's a ruling elder with, with uh, um, elders under him, that's all. See? So, Paul is addressing a young pastor, senior pastor. But he tells him, warn them that be rich in this world. That they trust not in uncertain riches. See, you hear people run oh, I'm financially secure. Ain't nothing secure about my money. Not in this day and time. Folk can hit one button, get in your account, and your money gone. Ain't nothing secure about my money. The security is what Jesus said in Matthew the sixth chapter. Take no thought for what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, or what you shall wear. You see that? Your security. He, he was in there. He's trying to develop us in his security. He, he is our security. I tell people, I live in Proverbs 10. I live in Proverbs 10, 22. For the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and it added no sorrow with. The blessing of the Lord. Y'all see that? It maketh rich, and it added no sorrow. It. But it's the blessing supernatural anointing to prosper. Somebody said, I thought the blessing was a car and a house. Those are byproducts of the blessing, of that anointing. That word blessed means to be supernaturally empowered by God to prosper or to do well. That means that ain't just with your finance, that's with your health, that's with your marriage, that's with your family, that's with your business, that's with your ministry. Y'all hear me? Empowered. And the word blessed also comes from the Greek word, your rock, where we get the word eulogy from. And whenever you want someone to come in to a funeral and say something good over a person, we call it a eulogy. Now, I don't care how dirty the person was in life. You don't want nobody coming in there saying, oh, yeah, she was a low-down, dirty, stinking dog. You don't want that. You want somebody to stay eating the person? That might have been, might have fit their description. But you want somebody to come in and speak something good over them. Well, God has already, you rock you. He's already spoke something good over you. And what the scripture said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that do what? Proceed out of the mouth of God. So if I live by the words that proceed out of God's mouth, those words are power. If God says I'm a millionaire, if God says I don't care how it looks, I don't care. But now if God says I'm a millionaire, it is, but let me share something. We, you can't just sit down on your behind. Come on. And don't employ none of your gifts. Don't, 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 don't do none of the instructions God tell you to do. He tell you to start this company, start that company. Come on. You can't just sit down. And thinking that, that the Bible is a genie. And you rub it and God come up out of you and give you three wishes. Do y'all hear me? Oh my God. I say the kingdom. I said the kingdom. is power. It's authority. It's manifested presence. It's the glory. Man, you got something in you that, that, that if you learn how to use it, you'll never have a need for nothing. I wish I had somebody talk right now. You would never have a need for, I mean, you don't have a need now. I don't care how it's looking. Well, Apostle, it don't look like that. I tell you, Apostle, I'm going through and I'm telling you something, but the devil is really riding me, coming against me. I don't care what the devil is doing. The Bible says submit yourself to God. Then do what? Resist the devil and he'll flee. <coughs> Resist means to put up a fight. What am I fighting with? The word of God. Above all, taking the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, which is an offensive weapon. Faith is a defensive weapon. That means that when thoughts come, you put the shield up and those thoughts are deflected. Come on. The enemy wants to explode your mind. Do you know, you know 
back in the days of when, when Paul wrote that, they um, would have a catapult where they would send hundreds of flaming arrows at one time, but they just wasn't on fire. These arrows had a solution on them that whenever it hit something, it blew up. But the shield of faith could quench it. The shield of faith was about four feet wide and four feet tall and was bonded with special metal and leather. But this leather had been conditioned to quench those arrows. Because when them arrows hit, they blow up on impact. I've seen people on YouTube demonstrating those kind of arrows now. But the shield of faith, when it hit the shield of faith, it puts the, it puts the arrow out. It distinguishes it. See, thoughts, those are thoughts that's coming at your mind. And they have to be distinguished. You can't sit up and let all them thoughts hit your mind. Hit, it's going to explode your mind. Next thing you know, you're doing foolishness, talking foolishness. I don't know. I don't know, Pastor. I tell you, I don't know. The devil, the devil, the devil. Then that's what the enemy wants. But the Bible said that the shield of faith will quench those thoughts. Put them out. You can't let thoughts keep running through your head and, and manifesting the words and imagination. That you, you wreck your own life that way. Run around thinking what the doc what the doctor said. Uh, it looks bad. My uncle said it ain't gonna work. He tried it, his business failed. You ain't your uncle. Oh, come on here, somebody. I don't care what the doctor, anybody else say. He can't tell. At the end of the day, it's what God says. It's what we believe. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm moved by what I believe. Come on. I've had pain in my body and confessed the word at the same time. Yes. I've had symptoms. Come on. I've had symptoms. Like anybody else. And it may come against my body, come against anybody else. But I listen to God when God tells me what to do. I get in the Word. I find the healing scriptures. And then if it's something He tells me to start doing with my body, if it's something He tells me to stop putting in there, uh -oh. see, I know you just want to be healed and go back eating all the same mess that made you sick. Uh oh. Mm hmm. I know, I know, I know, I know. So we want to get healed and still eat all the same mess that makes you sick. So what has to happen is, I listen to God. And God tells me what to put in my body and what not to put in my body and what to do about my body. It might be a certain kind of exercise I have to do. See, the problem is with us is that we don't want to do nothing. We want magic. We want God to wave the magic one over our life and everything disappear and we can go right back doing the same thing that made us sick that made us broke that made us depressed am i getting any help yeah the same thing that that brought us in bondage we want to keep doing now you got to be crazy the bible no, no, no the bible didn't say it but i'm saying it it's insanity or you got to be crazy to keep doing the same thing and think you're going to get some different results. You've got to be out your mind. Hey, y'all hear me right now. If excess shopping and all that stuff made me broke, what good would it do God to bring you out of debt and you ain't got that habit under control? If eating the wrong stuff made you sick, what good would it do God even heal you? You go back eating the same mess that, that made you sick. Getting depression off you. Then you go back to think about, uh, oh, you, I can't stop thinking about her. I can't stop thinking about him. And you empowering them thoughts. Next thing you know, you right back depressed. Or you get like some of the holiday folks. Oh, it's getting that time. I'm going to be so depressed on Christmas. Mm -hmm. I lost so I lost him on Christmas. See? A a a but you empower yourself by thinking. As he thinks
think and then it says the man think his heart, so see Proverbs 23 and 7. Y'all see that? Oh my God. Y'all want y'all to catch this here. So I'm going to take territory. I got to have a new mind. I can't have that old fearful mind. That's what happened with the children of Israel. They couldn't move into their promised land because of their mindset. The Bible said that faith, because those who heard the word, it was not mixed with faith. You know how many people sitting in church and they, mix, and, and they are not mixing the word with faith? When you mix the word with faith, you put action to it. And you act when God tell you. But see, most people ain't got enough intimate relationship, don't pray enough, don't, don't be in God's presence enough for even to hear God telling them what to do. See? And, and it's a blessing when, when you can hear God, hear the voice of God. If it's still small voice, amen. See? And I found out something just lingering around God and lingering in his presence. You know, a lot of people ask me, Pastor, I didn't even know God's voice so clear. Same way I knew my mother's voice. Same way. I was always around my mother. And I know how my mother, uh, my mother's deceived, but I know how her voice still sounds. Mm -hmm. I have a daughter talk just like my mother. And I know God's voice because the time I hang out with him, I'm always around. He, he right in here. He, he right in my belly. I mean, he's right in my soul in the center of my being. Why wouldn't I know his voice? I'm never alone. He's always with me. I lay down, he's with me. While I'm sleeping, while I wake up, he's with me. Does this make any sense? Now, so if I'm going to take territory, I got to be able to understand his voice. Because when it's time for me to execute, baby, I have to move. You got to move. When it's time to execute, you got to move. You, you can't be sitting there uh, consulting everybody. What do you think I ought to do? <clears throat> do you think I ought to do this, do that? No, you got to get to a place where when God speaks, you got to have confidence in what he say. Are y'all hearing me? You gotta have a confidence. And confidence means to have so much, so much trust until you just sit down, like on a couch or a chair, and don't even think about it, but you believe that chair holds you up. That's confidence right there. That's the way he said, I need you to be in the word. I need you to be in so much confidence. Have so much confidence in what I say that you just sit down on. Just do what I say without thinking. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, you need me to come. Lord speak, give the $100. Okay? And, and don't even think about it. Give the $25. The, uh, 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 go on the corner of so-and-so. Go, go there. Just go there. And do it, don't think. Don't be sitting up trying to rationalize, reason it out with God. Okay, now, Lord, why am I doing this here? Why am I going there? What, what sense is this making? Might not make a bit of sense to you. You're not trying to make sense. You're making faith. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hallelujah. Do y'all see this? My God. So I got, I got, I got to have a, a, a bold mindset. Bold. See, a boldness will bring on courage. Courage is the ability to act against fear. It's the ability to act against fear. Y'all see that? It is the ability to act against fear. That's what courage is. I want you to know that. Courage is the ability to act against fear. Now, understand tonight what I'm telling you. It's taking territory. Possibly you're talking about territory. New areas of life. 2023 is going to be a time to take new areas of new life. New areas of life. These places that God has ordained for you to dominate. Certain business ventures. Certain levels of ministry. 
You're taking, even taking your family back from the devil. You, you, you're breaking his hands off your family. Glory to God. Am I talking to anybody right now? See, I want you all to understand your ministry, your business, all this. You're going to have to understand that you have what you call the blessing. I told you I live in the blessed. You have a supernatural edge to your life. A supernatural edge. Your words are supernatural. Do y'all hear me? They trigger the supernatural. Your obedience. Your words are supernatural. Your words should be filled with faith. Faith-filled words are supernatural. When I release faith-filled words, I'm releasing faith through my word. And when I release faith through my words, it acts as a force. The force of faith. What did Paul say? And David, even, he quoted, quoted David. I believe, therefore have I spoken. Remember when he cut Goliath, killed Goliath? He did everything that he told Goliath he's going to do to him. He said, I'm going to cut your head out with your own sword. He said, I'm going to defeat you today. See, everything David said, he did it. Come on, somebody. See, you, see he believed it. He said, I believe, therefore have I spoken. The same way Paul said, this is the, 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 the spirit of faith or the force of faith. When you learn, when you learn how to apply faith as a force, hmm, it moves stuff, whether it wants to move or not. I don't care what the devil said. I don't care what he said all this year, what they said, whoever. When you get faith in your spirit as a force and get faith-filled words coming up out of you, it penetrates things, it moves things, you make decrees, and it shall be what? Establish glory to God. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that tonight. You're not no, no, no pilgrim of sorrow. Passing through this barren land. So quit singing all that mess. Quit singing all that stuff. All them defeated songs. You can sing defeat as well as confess it. Climbing mountains and coming on the rough side. Speak the stuff. But that shit cool to cool about. <clears throat> God put the word system in you just like he operated by words. Your authority worked by words. Come on here, somebody. Whatever you bind on earth, how you going to bind it with your words? You're going to command it to stop. You're going to command it to cease. Do y'all hear me right now? You're going to use your words. It come a time you got to rise and speak. You got to declare the way you want it to be. Are y'all listening to me right now? Glow shot by my, my, my side. I love, I love when prophets speak. I like when they speak to me. But you know what I like? I like when the Holy Spirit speaks to me and tells me what he's going to do. And then send a prophetic witness. Huh? Whoa, 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 <laughs> Then send a prophetic witness along and tells me. It don't be that new. See, a lot of people looking for new stuff. It, I get my stuff fresh from the press. You should be too. When I speak something to you, it should be confirmation. You should have been in that prayer clause. You should have been praying. And you should have been in the presence of God and the presence of the Lord. Mm -mm -mm. Comes up on you. And speak a word in your spirit. He works by the system of the still small voice. I know you want five angels to come in your bedroom with a loud, thundering voice. You've been watching too much TV. Mm-hmm. Want the, uh, the, the, the cloud, the sky to open up over your bedroom. I am the Lord, thy God. Watching too much TV. A lot of times God speaks by a still, small voice. 
Sometimes things God say to you is still small for them. We see it in the story with Elijah. Elijah was got depressed. He killed all the problems. Then the next day, Jezebel. I can't. I, one thing I can figure. Why he just going to cut Jezebel head off? But fear got him and got him depressed in a darn cave. And God asked him, said, what are you doing in this cave? He said, Lord, they didn't kill all your prophets. And only I left. God said, boy, come on here. I got 7,000 men ain't bowed their knees, Bill. You running from a woman? He said, get up. The Bible said he got up and came to the mouth of the cave. Then he said that was a, uh, a great wind that came by. But the Lord wasn't in the wind. A fire, but the Lord wasn't in the fire. An earthquake came that break rocks. The rocks was falling in peace, but the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. But afterwards, the Bible said he spoke through a still, small voice. I told Obokosha, a still, small voice. Am I talking to anybody right now? I said a still, small voice. Glory to God. Do y'all see that? A still small voice. So now, you got to understand the concept of the still small voice. If you understand the concept of the still small voice, this is always a big demonstration you're going to hear and you're going to have a fiery dream. And all. Sometimes God speaks in the stillness and quietness in your soul. That's why a lot of time it's good to get the noise out of your soul. Get all them noisy voices out. Get the devil voice out. Get your own logical voice. Get, get your uncle out, your auntie voice out. Come on, get all them folks out that's, that's speaking the opposite of what the words say. Get them out. I said get them out. Quieten your spirit down. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Quieten down your soul. Quieten your soul down. Are y'all hearing me? I said, quieten your soul down. Hmm. Thank you. Quieten your soul down. Get all that noise out your spirit. Get into the peace of God so you can hear God. You're going to want to take some territory. You got to obey to hear his voice. You want to possess the land? You got to obey his voice. So now, and after you get quiet and God give you instructions, do not consult a bunch of people. Just do what God tell you to do. God's going to give you somebody to talk to. You know, you're trying to uh, get a big real estate project going. Don't sit up and consult a bunch of folks and ask them their opinions of what you... And God has told you what property to approach. And he told you, just approach it. And he's going to put the words in your mouth so you'll be able to deal with the real estate project. Don't do not Ain't... Ain't Lily, what do you think? Boy, you better, you better use your head. You ain't got no money to do all that. Uncle Will, but what? No, come on, man. She calls a copy of the Kasata Tando do Kusha by my son. Be mindful that when God speaks to you, He's speaking in here, still small. Just be mindful and just say yes. And keep and listen to this another thing. Stay in the presence of the Lord. You, he's inside of you, but keep him stirred up around you through worship. And just a lot of times, just when you pray, just minister to the Lord. Don't even ask him for nothing or anything like that. If, if, it, if he starts coming out telling you to ask him, that's fine. But start in with Thanksgiving and worship and pray. Just begin to praise him for what he's already done. Then just and just worship him for just who he is. Just begin to worship him for just who he is. Do y'all see that? So when you worship him just who he is and just 
and just find pleasure hanging out with him. <laughs> find pleasure just hanging out with him, just spending hours, spending time alone with him. Am I right? Just spending time alone in a place where just you and him, you can hear his voice real good, crystal clear. Am I right? Calm all the noise down. Get out of noisy environments. See? So what I want you to understand tonight, you're going to have to have a different mind to take territory. Taking territory is no joke. Taking territory. Now, you can't be afraid to trust him. Because the instructions he might give you to do, they might be a little scary and it might look like you can't do it. See? But he's going to tell you to do what you can do. Because this is how the supernatural is triggered. It's when you do what you can do and then he will do the rest. Does this make any sense? I say then he will do the rest. When you do what God, what you can do. What's the little widow woman that was gathering the sticks when Elijah told him said, what are you doing? She said, I'm gathering sticks. I'm gathering sticks so that I can make some bread. This is a time of famine. This is when God has sent him there. And he had already commanded her to sustain, to keep him there. During the whole time of the famine, God would provide for him, her, and the boy all the time of the famine. But she had to follow the instructions that the prophet gave her. The Bible said that he asked, what are you doing? She said, I'm, I'm, I'm making, I'm getting sticks together so I can make a bread, some bread for me and my son so we can eat it and die. It's our last meal. He said, fear not. Notice that first thing he said, fear not. That's what God's going to tell you. Because see, this is her last meal. Hmm. This is her last meal. Some of y'all skitching because God has told you to give uh, some of your last money. Or to do something that's, oh God, I ain't got that much strength. This is this lady's last meal. Do y'all hear me? I said it was her last meal. Hmm. So now, but because the fact that God had already commanded, see, you don't know who God then commanded to bless you. That's why you can't be moving with fear. Oh God, if I say that to them, I'm going to look really bad. You don't know what God, you don't know who God have commanded. Notice he used the word command. He didn't use the word ask. He said, I commanded her. I have commanded a widow to sustain you in Zarephath. Commanded her. She had to do it. Some of y'all don't get it, do you? you? You so full of democracy. Democrat. You, you so full of democracy. When God commands people to do something, they have no choice. I know you said, but the God don't make people do nothing. When God commands, he put the influence where they want to do it. She wanted to obey. So okay, I'll do it. And then he gave her prophetic instructions and then he released a promise. He said, the barrel of meal will not spill. In other words, it will never be depleted during the whole time of the time. So she did as the prophet said. And the Bible said that her, her son, and the prophet ate the whole time of the family. Now the word of God said this here. But out of all the widows, widows that was in Zarephath, why would he send him to one that's broke? You know why? Because she had faith. That was rich. That was widows that had money. You know, but it's easy for God to send more of them widows that got money. And But God is impressed by faith. That woman had faith. She had faith enough to give her last. She had faith to obey God. That God had commanded her. I wonder if you got faith to obey God. I wonder do you have faith to obey God tonight? Whatever God is putting in your heart to do. I, I wonder either to give or to say or whatever. I wonder do you have faith? 
to believe. Y'all see that? Wow. See, we are on the verge of expanding, and I'm going to talk more about expansion, expanding, increasing. See, you, you're on the verge of increasing. See. Now, hmm. One of the things that I just really want you to do, and, I, and, and I'm going to, about done with the teaching part for tonight, is to really understand at this point, God wants your life to expand. God don't want you to keep living at the same level where you're living. Am I getting any help? God don't want you living at the same level where you've been living. God wants some expansion around your life. He wants some increase. Y'all hear me? Just like he increased the, the, the widow woman. Life. God wants to bring increase around your life. I just believe God tonight. Thank you. To take territory means that we're going to be increasing. 2023 is a year of expansion. And God's going to start expanding you before, before January. Year has already started. You're, going to be, you're expanding your, your businesses, your ministry. Your health is going to get better. Hallelujah. Things that you're battling with in your body, you ain't going to be battling them. But you've got to do what God tells you to do. He tell you to stop eating something, stop eating it. If he tell you to walk and drink water, do what he say do. Come on. Jay, do some jumping jacks. I don't know what he might tell you. I'm just saying. Holy Ghost is a coach. Holy Ghost will tell you what to eat. He can tell you, you know. And But it would be to help you, though. Do y'all hear me? Hmm. My Lord. Isn't God good? I wonder tonight on this line. If there anybody, I said um, that God was going to touch many to sow a hundred dollar seed. This is still October. If this month here, yeah. Amen. This month, God was going to touch some folks to sow a hundred dollars on this month of October here. Yeah. I wonder if there anybody online tonight that is ready to obey God in that area. I don't know if you is. We ain't got no gun up to your head, nothing like that. I just want to know that if the Spirit of God that spoke to you so that seed of $100, I want you to do it tonight. Amen. If you, if you, even if it's like the little widow woman, if it's a severe sacrifice for right now, see the thing about a seed, it leaves your hand but never leaves your life. I said it leaves your hand but never leaves your life. Some of you have already sown a hundred dollars this month, and I'm telling you, God is going to move for you supernaturally. Going to trigger things for you. Things are going to become. It's going to be easy. God is ready to make things easy. Do y'all hear me right now? I said, God's ready to make things easy. Brother Jay, the Lord said, I'm ready to make things easy. I'm ready to make things easy. You, there were some attacks you went under. Came against you. He was under some attack, uh, even between last week. But God told me to tell you, man, God, don't worry about it. There's a breakthrough, breakthrough anointing. And God said that I'm gonna allow everything to work out that's supposed to work out. You're looking at something by January, mid January, that you need to happen. God told me to tell you, trust Him, even what you see. Trust him. But it's going to, things going to trigger before then. But God is going to put a solid real estate plan together for you. And God is going to give you favor and going to show you how to tap into some resource that you know not of. God's going to put you in contact. And God's going to tell you, financing of different things will be easy. God said, I want to make your business easy. I want to make whatever it is you do easy. 
Thank you, Father. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Sister uh, Shannon, God said that the breakthrough is up on you. The breakthrough. The breakthrough. The breakthrough. The breakthrough tonight. Lord said that you are going to be seizing and taking new territory. There are some things you're going to seize in the spirit realm. Because there are some personal things that you need. But I'm going to tell you something. The Lord said the hour has come now. But you're going to learn and use that authority like never before. And I hear God said that I have opened up to you doors. And I mean doors. Doors that has been closed. But God said that and there's some was closed like two years ago. But they need to open back up. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, yes. Obey God. Amen. Obey the Lord tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And all the healing you ever needed is done. You'll see. You can really advance over this next year like never before. Your ministry, business, family, different things going to advance. And I hear God say, nothing shall be impossible. Thank you, Lord God. Yes. Sister uh, Gwen, Sister Gwen, God told me to tell you that things are going to work out where you live. And <clears throat> in spite of how things been, the enemy fighting you with your seed, sowing your seed and all that. But God said, I'm working things out in the financial realm. Things are working out in a big way. And I hear God saying, nothing shall be impossible. New doors have opened up. Not open, they have. <clears throat> and you're going to understand that everything that the devil meant for evil, God has turned around for good. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Amen. Uh, Pastor Margaret, the Lord said, <clears throat> all the challenges and everything is taking you into a place in the spirit. You've been praying about spiritual blessings. And God said, I'm getting ready to take you deeper in the spirit. Deeper. Houses and all that stuff is done. But God said in ministry wise, deeper. And even with your help, God's going to start giving you instruction. And you're going to start losing <coughs> urges to eat certain things or whatever. However God leads you on. I, I don't tell nobody what to do. What to eat, what not to eat. If they ask me some advice, I'll give it to them. But the Lord said that I'm going to purify your body. I'm going to purify your bloodstream. I'm going to move in a mighty way. Thank you. And I hear the Lord said, you're about to tap into some great things, awesome things. Things that you never thought. But you'll see exactly what I'm saying. Thank you, Lord. God show sure, he's going to reveal them things to you. As they come about, it's going to blow your mind. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Pastor Pam, I don't know if you're still around with me. I, I don't see your face. Mm -hmm. I don't see your face up there. But if he is, you say amen and do something. Because mm -hmm. I want you to hear what I got to say to you. If not... The word of our, I'll, I'll, I'll give the word to you. Amen. God is good tonight, isn't he? Oh, my goodness. I tell y'all, I just feel the power of the Lord tonight. I tell y'all, too. Bless your cut those I want everybody to sow a seed tonight. Whatever you can sow. Uh, those of you that, can, that said they're going to sow $100, it's a special blessing on this month of sowing that $100 seed. I would encourage you tonight to sow. Tonight, when everybody in line, just sow something. Any the way you sow it, you know, however you sow it. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The blessing of the Lord. Amen. And I just believe God that God will touch. I feel the hundred dollar seeds that people are sowing. I feel that. And I feel God touching the hearts of many to do it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, God is awesome. 
And I say God is awesome. So I would encourage you to sow a seed. Sow what you can sow tonight. Amen. A lot of big things are coming up. I'm believing God for. Concerning the ministry. Just. Amen. Just sow what you can sow on tonight. God is good, isn't he? Amen. I, 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 I hope the word. You all enjoyed the word tonight. And. Not just enjoy it, but take it to heart. Take it to mind. We are seizing territory. We are taking territory. Amen. I said we are taking territory tonight. Amen. Taking territory. That's what we're talking about tonight. Taking. Taking. I'm not talking about that. Mr. Devil, can you have? No. Woke up and take it. Show up. Something's going to be just a matter of just showing up. Amen. The devil ain't going to have no choice but that to do it. It's got to show up. Amen. So we just praise God and thank God for each one tonight. And I want all y'all, whatever you can sow tonight, just be a blessing and sow. Those that were sold a hundred, sold a hundred. Amen. And I want to continue to preach, teach this word. I haven't been on a few days, but you know, uh, we're just releasing the word. Amen. As God lead us and I believe God. Amen. So I just thank God for each one of you. Praise God. Amen. Until tomorrow. Amen. That was the day the Lord said. We will be back teaching the word. We're talking about taking territory, possessing the land. Who glory in Jesus' name. God bless you.